Welcome to The Metal Prognosis, my name is Lee. In today's video, we're talking about DI recording, so direct input recording with your guitars. Uh, I've had a few people over the years try argue with me uh, they don't like using a direct input uh, signal going through because they like to get their sound, capture it, play it right, and then they're done. Now, I like that attitude, that's not too bad, but having a DI signal as well can be extremely handy, and you don't have to miss out on your own tone as well. And that's what we're going to be doing in this video. So what I have got is a Swamp uh, Direct Box here, which we can use as a splitter. So we split the signal off into two different paths. So first path we're going to be doing is we're going to be putting to our Orange Dark Terra here. So we're going to get the sound that we really like. Not so much that we really like, but for the purpose of this uh, example, this demonstration, we're going to get a, we're going to pretend that this is our golden sound that we love. And a second signal we're going to be splitting off into here is going straight into my audio interface to capture a dry signal. We'll do it, so we'll set it all up like that so I can show you. Then we'll do a quick jam. Then we'll go back into the studio and then I'll show you exactly how we can utilize something like this, having a dry signal uh, and how powerful and positive it really can be. So I'm saying that, let's start plugging everything in and start having some fun. Now I have everything not really set up ready to go, but the cameras are set up ready to talk about it because we actually haven't plugged anything in. So what I thought would be a really cool idea to kind of emphasize and exaggerate a little bit on the two different extreme types of setups we get from the one guitar signal is I have my Savage Drive pedal here. So we are going to be using uh, the Savage Drive into the Orange Dark Terra because it's gonna work really good for this example of video and it's just friggin' awesome to do and put together. So let's start plugging everything in. So the most obvious one is input. So your guitar goes into here, and now the magic box is gonna split off the signal into two different paths here. We have um, a parrot out here, uh, and we have a different one there. And that's all we need is two. You can get different splitters that have multiple uh, ones, uh, three or four, but I've only ever needed two. So what we're gonna do is take our guitar signal straight out of there and into, um, our Savage Drive here, and then the Savage Drive is going to go out, Let's see if I can do this without making too much noise, straight out of there into the Dark Terra here. So we give it some power as well, like so. So first thing we do before we do anything else is we check to make sure this signal is good and we have actually something, because there's no use continuing if there's no sound coming out of here first. So we have good signal. Now we turn this on. I do love that Savage Drive matched up with the Dark Terror. Um, they, they just work an absolute charm. But we have good signal coming through here. It's nice and clean. We're getting a good capture uh, on our screen here. And just to be a little bit more transparent, I have my uh, Dark Terror running through my Torpedo Two Notes uh, load box. And I'm using that cab sim on there because I just really want to emphasize uh, the two extreme difference. So, we're getting a straight capture of straight audio on here, no other plugins, nothing else. So then we are working with the uh, direct input, which I'm gonna plug in in a moment. Uh, we're gonna see the difference and not be too overly tampered with too much, making it too busy in the studio, if that makes sense. So um, I'm really happy with the old settings that I left on that uh, Savage Drive. <laughs> A lot of aggression, a lot of good type of attack. 
So the only other thing we're gonna do is before we switch over to the studio to talk about it more, is we need to get our dry signal happening. So what I've got is my plug down here. So on my audio interface here, really hoping the camera picks it up, we have two channels plugged in. The left channel has coming straight out of my mixing console here, which has the Dark Terra uh, setup. And on the right channel, or channel two, however you wanna pair it and think about it, uh, I normally think left and right because that's how the program interprets it, but it's channel one and two. So on the second one, the right channel, we have this. So we are plugging straight in like that. So now let's go onto the actual computer, uh, have a look at that and see how we can set it up and how it actually works together. And then we can do a jam and then see how we can utilize that dry signal that we just recorded. All right, now we've got everything set up on the computer. Let's uh, clean up this a little bit to set it up to what we need for what we're doing now. Uh, so a little bit limited of a room with this monitor uh, for now. Hopefully that will change soon. So I've got my tracking set up there that we just did uh, right now, capturing that. But what we need is we need something for the DI coming through. So what we are gonna do, a little marker there. Um, we are gonna add a new track add track, mono, call it DI, add track, put it right underneath our tracking one there. First thing we're gonna do is, it's coming in stereo left. So as I said before, stereo left is one. We've got this coming through channel two, which is right. So if we do that there, capture this so you'll be able to hear it better actual thing. So at the moment, if we just monitor uh, the tracking one, we have our we have our cool sounding guitar. And down here, as you can see, or I should use my mouse lead, because that's where everyone's gonna be able to see it easier. Uh, our DI there. So it's coming in a little bit too soft, which is not a bad thing, but we will just boost it up a little bit on our audio interface. Probably just a tad bit more. So what I did there is I purposely played a little bit harder and a little bit grindier. I did some deep mutes just to make sure that nothing was gonna start peaking. And as we can see here, the levels, I keep using my pointing at the screen. Uh, as we can see, the levels here are both pretty decent. They're not too bad at all. And they're not far of each other. So if we go down to our actually input track here to see. So with some aggressive picking, we can see uh, the levels are pretty straightforward. Now, if we turn off uh, monitoring, as in being able to hear it, the uh, good sound, and put on just the DI track, this is what we get. Turn the guitar on. Sounds like crap. You cannot record an album like that and you cannot do anything aggressive and brutal to really um, let your performance shine, so to speak, with that, because that's just uh, rubbish. <laughs> but uh, it does serve a very good purpose. So that's why this setup is really good because we don't need to turn that on because you have them both on. Uh, as an example, it just sounds a bit clashy. <laughs> It sounds, yeah, it sounds really, mm, I don't like it. Like for example, let me send it uh, left and right so you can really hear the difference without it being clashed in the center. It 
it's just, it's the natural sound of a guitar. It's, it has that uh, twang that all dry signals do have, and it's the actual uh, amps and, and um, cabinet speakers and all the other different things in between that make it sound amazing. Uh, but the raw sound is what you're hearing when just going straight in is that. That is what your guitar actually sounds like, naked, for lack of a better term. So now I've captured that and we've done, I've shown you how super quick and easy it is to actually set up via interface. So now I've got two tracks. So I'm going to do a jam and during my jam, I'm definitely going to have that monitoring turning off so I can only hear the awesome sounding guitar. Then after that, we'll come back and we will turn off the awesome guitar and show how we can utilize um, the crap sounding guitar into something amazing as well. So sit back. That's probably too close to the camera. Sit back, relax, enjoy the tune. And yeah, we'll get stuck into a little bit more work on the other side. Now we're finished with the jam. Uh, so let's have a look at all these little files here. So uh, we've got our drums, got our bass. Let's put it bigger there just so it looked more interesting while I was recording it for visual effects. Um, <laughs> the two DIs I just chucked in here and, and uh, muted them just because uh, I didn't want to hear them, but I need to put them somewhere because I only had the one DI track set up here. So let's quickly go through firstly um, what is happening with the DI. So if we turn this on, we should have just the clean sound, which is the boring and crap one. So what we can do now, there's a few ways we can do this, but let's do this the fun way. So we go to inserts and we have a look at different um, amp simulators that I've got. Uh, I don't have that many because, um, well, I do a lot of stuff more through actual amps or uh, external equipment. But the few I have here, actually, let's take it one step further. Let's, let's create a couple of channels. So we'll turn this tracking channel into a DI left, and this one can be a DI right. First thing we do is we just fix this. So you've got the DI signals coming in, coming out of guitars. You can go into guitars as well. So I've got these grouped off. So all my guitars go into here. So for example, if we bring up uh, the actual song, hit those and play it. We have the two left and right here to put in there. Those both go directly into my guitar bus here. So everything I need to control uh, is in my guitar bus here. So if I want to do any EQing, anything with the guitars, I can just do it all directly on that one track. So we'll grab our two muted ones here and we'll bring them up to our DI left and right channels here. And what we'll do is we will mute those other guitars. So at the moment we should just hear Now they hear those guitars because the drums uh, and bass are well and truly outpowering it because we've only got that rubbish coming through. So let's turn that rubbish into something cool. So we mute this one first, uh, put that in the center, center, that's cool. Just so it's easy to listen to and go to inserts and let's look at some of my guitar plugins like i said before um what have we got here but ant roots this is a cool free one so now if we play it that 
that is a really cool way on how to utilize a direct signal because we can pull up something like this and straight away, that's no editing, no nothing. I just opened up the interface. Um, all the presets are all, oh, this is a high noon one where everything is just all straight up and nothing else. Um, so yeah, let's see, let's go into it more. I've got a different amped one. I'll bring in that. And yeah, there's definitely plenty of different presets you can go off or actually go off the actual amp settings there yourself. Uh, let's do like there's heaps more I could do, even if we wanted to go for the my most expensive one, which is, I'd love to own one of these actual hardware ones, but that's not likely because they're really expensive and hard to get on your hands on in Australia. This is one my go-to one when I'm just practicing and putting stuff on. Ooh. Sounds a bit weak now compared to the other ones that I had on there. Especially the default, so we'll just stick with the default. So the options are endless, absolutely endless. Um, now I can keep going through, actually we'll just keep going through just a little bit more, just a, just a tad bit more. Let's, let's just take this one more step. So that was the Fortin one. Let's try to get my money's worth out of this. Let's bring up the other Fortin one. Keep the same, just turning it on, no presets, no nothing. So uh, we'll left and right those two bad beasts there and we should get something cool. You want to talk about easy and user friendly. Um, look at that right there. So let's just take it one more step because it's really fun and easy. So what we can do is or what a lot of people do. So we'll get rid of that. We'll go back to that stereo. So we're just dealing with this one track here just because it's easy to listen to. And we'll bring in the right one here. So now we can hear what it's like in the mix. And let's say we want a little bit more bottom end um, in our guitars. So we can just go straight in here and edit on the fly. We can go straight to the uh, EQ settings here, uh, or we can do my preferred way, which is muck around with the mic positions, because uh, this interface is really cool. So we can just go here. Uh, this is actually a lot easier if we do it soloed. <laughs> Got a little bit more tinny sound, which you can get some cool, like either ultra effects just by doing that with a mic, or even if you're going for like a real raw old school black metal type of thing, that could be really cool. Let's bring it right into the edge of the cone. So bring that in, and we've got another condenser here, microphone over here, so we can do the same with that. And suddenly we've created a lot more bottom end just by moving the mics around. Uh, so, I mean, they're probably going to be out of phase now, but here's an example of um, in, in the mix.
And let's say you wanted to mix it with the other one. So we'll go left to right again. And that is just the absolute tip of the iceberg there. Now, even to take it, let's take it one step further before we move on to uh, other things, which is, um, mute that, is by grabbing the actual guitar and we can do the same thing because we've got a direct signal going through. So on here, because we go here, uh, I really need a bigger monitor to fit this all in. But we've got it coming through, use the mouse lead, we've got it coming through our right channel, which is our direct input. So if we did it to our left, turn that off because that otherwise it does crazy stuff. Discard that. So now we've got back to the dark terror setup. And then, we go back to the right. Now we've got our direct signal. Yeah, as much as we know as that sounds a bit crap, because uh, it does, let's just start mucking around with other stuff. Uh, for example, like the grind machine. It's a bit noisy, so we get a noise gate on, just to get rid of some of that oomph. <laughs> This is really cool because you can just change it to heaps of different other stuff really easily. Which is cool, but it's actually better utilized uh, playing with the actual track so you can hear it as it's going to sound with what you captured and recorded. Talk about, as I said before, super easy, super quick, and you can just hear the results straight on the fly. And really importantly, with all the other instruments here that we've already got, so with the drums uh, and the bass here. Now I can keep going backwards and forwards and lots of other things we can do, uh, but what I'll do is I'll just do a couple other little quick mix downs uh, with a couple of these other interfaces with the preset settings there so you can hear a comparison to having it uh, with the raw dark terror input here or mixing it in with some of the uh, digital stuff just for some fun really and then yeah we'll have a quick thoughts about it after that so enjoy these other little kind of examples uh, for lack of a better term or demonstrations and yeah I'll see you all on the other side Time for some final thoughts about DI recording and dual recording, as in recording with an actual amp sound and capturing the dry signal as well. So let's run through a few things that it can be really, really cool for. So firstly is what I did just before, which you watched, which is having a dry signal while uh, recording hearing this. So you got to hear my characteristics 
of, of how as a guitarist and what I wanted to capture with my guitaring. And then we could alter it with purely in-house uh, amp simulators and um, plugins. And you saw how easy it was. Just flip through them and we didn't delve into any of the actual programs themselves because that's not what this video is for. It was to show an example of how they were. But even the default settings that we had on there uh, were pretty impressive uh, considering, yeah, we didn't change much at all. <laughs> so that was really cool. But let's go through some really cool ideas of, of why you'd actually probably want to do this because you still might be thinking, hmm, not quite sure why we're doing this. If you want to use stuff like that, why don't you just go straight into the computer and do everything that way, which you absolutely can. There's nothing wrong with that. But we're using this as in to compare what you've captured. Um, I like to call it externally, because I'm using external gear for it, compared to internal in the actual computer, uh, different programs and that. So firstly is, we use a Savage Drive here. Really cool, worked really well with this um, Orange Amp here. But let's say we'll like, let's say we had a really fussy guitarist. They're out there, they exist, I'm one of them. They thought, this sounded really cool, but I've been sitting on it for a little bit, I'm not sure if that was the best. I want to hear how it sounds like with, let's say, the Fortin 33. Let's do that. Well, because we've got the dry tracks recorded from here, with the performance of having this enhancement, we can reamp it. So we can resend that dry signal going straight into the Fortin 33. And, and into the uh, Dark Terra here, straight into the mixing desk like as we did and then we're ready to go. So I don't need to actually replay it. We can just push play on there and record, uh, just like old dubbing cassette tapes type of theory. Push play there, uh, play there going through the um, Dark Terror with the 33 this time, and push record on the computer and capture exactly uh, from the same performance that I did, but this time with a 33. And you can even go further than that and go, oh, hang on, but I wanna know what it's like with the um, Eros. Exactly the same process. We reamp it, send that dry signal out, plugging straight into here, then into the orange dark terror, and we get an exact performance, uh, a duplicate performance um, of what we did without actually having to uh, have the guitarist. The guitarist can definitely come back into the studio, they're always welcome, but it's a case of uh, we don't need to worry about trying to redo the guitars again to physically play them. They're already there. So you can just do um, little sections here and there just to get a feel of it to see if any of these other pedals might work better from what your performance was. was. You might want a different amp head. You can easily do that. So you can still capture an acoustic, not acoustic, sorry, um, an analog or external um, capture of the sound of however you want it um, with the same original performance that you did. Because if you've got an album and you're quad tracking guitars, um, there, there could be over, whether it's an album or EP, it's even hard to even think of an estimated number uh, that it could be of how many guitar tracks you do compared to how you want to approach recording it. But let's say, for example, there could be 129 different uh, sections that you recorded for your EP, so for five songs. Now, for those over 129, I think I said 129, uh, different takes that you did, instead of getting the guitarist to come back and do them all again to make sure they're all spot on and exactly on how you like to, uh, how you were happy with the performance. Reamping is amazing. Get that dry signal, put them straight through here again, and you're set. Um, if you want to go digital, in case there might be, say, your amp head might have a little bit of a issue with its valves or something, or there might be something wrong with the setup that you've got that was unknown at the time. And this has happened to me in the studio before. There's been three or four of us listening to something being tracked live. There's been a pop or a click. No one heard it. I don't know how. No one heard it. It wasn't until a few days later we went back and went, what the hell's that? And once you hear it, you can't unhear it. And we're in a position where we're like, well, we've got to fix that. We can't have that. That's not good. We had the backup of a, a DI track. Having that safety, we could just put it straight in as it was. You couldn't hear any difference, but for some reason, uh, it worked the second time. Now, let's say if there was something actually wrong with the equipment, uh, I think I think we um, concluded, as best as what we could, that there was some power surge 
happening there. Just a slight one that went for a split second, just enough to make a couple of pops here and there, but not enough to like to turn the lights off or dim or anything like that, so no one noticed it when it actually happened. So we could use the same setup to do it again. But let's say we couldn't. Let's say we were stuffed. We had an amazing sound that we really liked, but we couldn't recreate it because um, let's say we had mics set up to this cab here and we moved them, we packed them up because we were finalized with the guitar. Not the best move to do, but sometimes it does happen. And if you don't notice it, how are you meant to know? We've got the position now to go, cool, we can grab a different amp head and try one. We can grab a Marshall or um, a Mess Boogie or whatever else we've got available for us um, to, to use. And we might just want to hear how that sounds anyway. We've got the capabilities to reamp it that way and do that um, and not lose a whole bunch of time trying to re-record the 129 tracks again. Now, the other really cool way to do it uh, is exactly pretty much like I did in the setup there. I performed it using the sounds out of this and the Savage Drive, which sounded really cool. Um, and then we got to just muck around with it digitally, bring up different digital amp uh, simulators and see how really cool sounds you can get. Then you can sit down and get your, um, I, like, I like to describe it like different hats you wear. So when you're playing guitar, you're in guitar playing mode. So you put that hat on and you just worry about your playing and nothing else. So you've got a really cool sound to be able to um, be in a position to be able to really um, be at your best to be able to perform. Then after that, if you're doing it digitally, you can put it up there and put your tone chasing hat on. Put that on there so you don't need to actually worry about the guitar performance. You can just worry about the guitar results. And then you can worry about, like as we did before on um, the neural uh, NTS, where you can move the mics around to get different uh, type of effects. Or you can run through all the different type of pedals they have and EQing and even try different cab simulators or IRs to really try home in what you really want. So it's really good to be able to just, once the guitar is recorded, you can move on to the next phase of the project and don't even worry about that, that's done. You can just worry about chasing uh, the final sound that you want of whatever part of the uh, phase you are in the process of uh, recording everything. There is lots you can do. I will say this though, this two notes, I wanted to use the cab simulator off here because it's decent, it's actually really decent. And I just want to emphasize that, that they've done a really good job of doing that because I wanted pure uh, an audio wave coming through to capture there and nothing else. I didn't want any other plugins to make it too busy or, or anything like that, just a straight raw sound to really emulate if we were to either mic that up or, you know, there's nothing wrong with using these in the studio anyway for a final recordings because uh, they're great units, these two notes. Um, but yeah, the cab sound matched up. Their in-house cab sound that they did is amazing with um, the Orange Dark Terror here and the Savage Drive. So um, yeah, just a bit of a, a nice little thumbs up to the two notes for how they did that there. Because oh, I know I'm nerding out a little bit, but that was <laughs> made things really user friendly and easy and quick. Because otherwise we'd send it through dry through this capture it and then bring in a cabinet or a speaker uh, emulator on there and try different uh, preset um, IR uh, impulse responses, captures that have been done in other studios, uh, which can be very tedious and a lot of mucking around and I definitely didn't want that for this video because this is just an example video of doing a super quick recording and doing all this. So yeah, that made my life extremely easy, which is good. Now there are lots you can do with uh, splitting off your signal into two to make sure you've captured another one as a backup. And there are heaps you can do with it, which I'm gonna cover in other videos, which is like uh, really easy to edit stuff and then re-amp it if you've made a mistake or there's a little sound that, or a tweak that wasn't quite right. Um, and lots of other different ways you can utilize it to um, save your project, save a lot of time and have a plan of attack um, set where you can just go through all the phases and make sure you're not going backwards and forwards and mucking around. Uh, and I am definitely, definitely a culprit of that when I very first started doing independent recording myself. Um, so this is something that's definitely helped me move on from that and push on, <laughs> which is great because uh, you want to get projects finished and projects moving. Um, so what are your thoughts about uh, splitting the signal off into two. Um, 
and especially something like this, the Swamp uh, DI box, which as I said, which I got for live, but I've actually used it a hell of a lot more for studios than I have live. Um, you know, this was, I think, I'm purely going off memory here, so I could be wrong. I think they're only charging $50 for this Australian. So, very inexpensive piece of equipment um, for what it can actually do and what you can get out of it. Um, so, just wanted to mention that before my uh, sign off because yeah, for $50, it's amazing. Now, there are cheaper ways you can even do it just with a mixing desk uh, as well, um, but I think that might be for another time, that type of video. But yes, for this, really cheap for a really large, um, uh, what's the right word? Tool for the studio that you can use for recording uh, guitars. And the same goes with bass as well. Uh, and the same, even with vocals, we've done uh, split vocals too. We've had it running through some processes, some running straight dry, uh, so we can utilize vocals later on too for the exact same purpose. So you, the, the artist don't need to, or the performer doesn't need to redo their takes if they've done it really well. Because as an engineer, you've got the copies there to give yourself the best chance to um, get the best results out of them. So how did you feel about doing this? And how? Uh, what are your thoughts on it in regards to as a general uh, ruling where if you're just a guitarist, would you be happy with an engineer doing something like this or would you prefer to go, nah, this is all just a bunch of bollocks, Lee, what the hell are you talking about? This is not useful, just go straight in and be done with it. Or are you the opposite of like, you don't really need one of these, you can just go straight in dry and use it straight in the computer. Or do you like this approach that I took as an example? Definitely keen for all your thoughts and to continue on this conversation. And I will be doing a couple other videos on DI um, tracking because there's so much to cover. There really, really is. So this was my attempt at doing a super quick one just to start this series off. So now I have babbled on long enough, I will do my sign off. Whether this video is in the foreground or the background, absolutely appreciate your company and really look forward to chatting with you again about these different type of recording uh, techniques and just ways of approaching things. Whether they're right or wrong or your preference or not, there's still a lot of fun experimenting with and having chats about and talks about. So until next time, please stay safe.